what am I supposed to be doing in this universe? What is my primary function as one of 7,000 million humans? How do I know that I'm actually doing the thing I'm supposed to be doing? Here we have an area designed for individuals who are asking just this question. I'm 72 years old. I live out here in Roundwood and I run a midlife crisis temple for people between the ages of, say, 28 to 50. All the sculptures indicate phases or states into which people get. So you have the state of birth, which can happen a thousand times a day, once a lifetime, the moment of bah, wow, right? And then you have the moment where I split myself in two to get a better angle on the world, right? And then I split myself. The final stage is where I, my craft runs out of energy. Whatever I've done, it's doesn't work any longer. It's become sane. Well, originally it was called Victor's Way. Uh, I did it my way, I got that from old blue eyes, you know, I did it my way, so I'm Victor, I did that. And then I had, a, uh, I had an encounter, a sexual encounter, and, uh, with, a, with, a, with a lady, and I, had, I experienced a tantric consummation, the great experience. Not a physical one, but in, in, uh, mental, tantric consummation. And in honor of the lady and the great insight this moment produced, I decided to turn Victor's way into Victoria's way. The first statue was the Fasting Buddha, this guy. He believed that if he could suppress emotion, he would get out of suffering. He decided he would use his brain. He would try to solve the problem in a rational way using clear observation, clean analysis and logic. Of course, he was centuries ahead of everybody else because he was basically a rational human. The entrance is a female genital, a vulva, vagina. This is the entrance to all religious establishments in the world because most of them have realized that what's inside the temple is a womb. So whether you go to a Hindu temple or a Buddhist vihara or a, you name it, they all look the same. And if you go up to Donnybrook and you're looking right and you're at the Donnybrook traffic lights, you know, there's a church on the right, you see two of them right on top of each other lightly disguised, often with sharp edges, indicating that this is a dangerous gate to go through. These, this has teeth. Carl Gustav Jung refers to this as vagina dentata, the tooth vagina. You see them all over India. Actually, every entrance is one of these. The idea being that the person who's going in, who's asking a fundamental question about his or her situation in life, really has to dig out her own source or core. She has to go deep inside. That's a dangerous business. The birth statue is really, oh, it's very complicated, right? It, it is the moment of birth. A child is born, and because its world is not yet relativized, what it experiences, it experiences real. There is no difference between it and its experience. There's no buffer, no relativity buffer in between. The mother and child is very simple. The idea is, it comes from India, comes from everywhere, that if the universe is whole, one, how does it know itself? Only by self-relativization. If I'm alone in the universe, there's no way I can know that I am. I only know it by what I am not, by difference. 
In this case, what the mother does, who is the representative of the whole, is she splits herself in two. She undergoes the pain of tearing herself apart. So there are now two of her. And as there are two, there is an opposite. The guy, uh, the man who splits himself in two, the split man, represents the 30-year-old who is uh, physically an adult, has everything going, usually a good education, even a good income, but really has no future. He doesn't know where he's going. In other words, he is yet lacking a creative thrust. It's indicated by the fact that he has no penis. He is uncreative. He knows for him to be real, he has to actually create difference in the world. But he can't create difference. He only creates sameness. And as such, he ceases to exist as a real entity. He's dying on his feet, and it's killing him. On the lake, there's a Shiva. We put the Shiva. The Shiva was the Indian attempt to resolve the split man issue. What does a male human do at 30? Does he sacrifice his life for a great ambition? Or does he live the simple life of happiness with the wife, the wife, the two kids, the Fiat Uno, and the job in an insurance company, right? And the man is torn between these two. On the one hand, he feels he, there is greatness. He's God. Of course, everybody's God, right? God within. He has something great to do. On the other hand, he wants to enjoy the simple things. So this guy was torn between the two. The finger is the phallus that's missing on the split man. The idea of a human is you have a vehicle without direction or a man without a phallus who becomes a phallus without a man or a direction where, or in other words, what the human does, he is an undirected biological system, right, that becomes so directional that the person or the vehicle disappears behind the thrust. And the great humans are the ones who can perform this feat, whereby they are just a, a body with capability, they become capability personified. And they are the truly greats. I calculate in, my, in this kind of endeavor, about one per mil of the population really has an interest. Okay? That would make a visitor number of about 4,000 for the whole of Ireland which I get. Now, 2,000 of those shouldn't be here. They're only working up an appetite. But 2,000 of them have an interest. And the other 2,000 don't even, the other 2,000, the 4,000, uh, haven't heard that it exists. But basically, if I get 1%, 1 per mil of the population, I'm doing very well.